There's nothing like starting your weekend by getting hacked at 3 a.m. on a Saturday morning, but unfortunately, that's what happened to Hugging Face today. So for those of you who don't know, Hugging Face is basically a website where a lot of researchers and AI developers share their work. It's also a great place to have other users and all kinds of people try out your models, use them on any number of GPU providers, whether it's Google Cloud, Amazon, etc. But today was kind of a rough day. And I have to say, I'm glad I'm not an SRE at Hugging Face today. So fortunately, they They've gotten all this under control and they've been really open about what happened because there's some companies that aren't quite as open. But what I want to get into today is why infrastructure like this is becoming incredibly important and is something that we should treat more delicately and more seriously going forward. And if you're a Hugging Face user who's been paying to use GPUs on their service before, like I have for some of my videos, I want to let you know what you have to do to make sure you're safe and mitigate any chance that you'll get caught up in whatever has happened this morning. So welcome to AI Flux. Let's get into it. So I'm gonna give some background as to when Hugging Face kind of identified this and what actually happened. So at some level, pretty much what happened was they figured out there was a device on their internal networks that they didn't really recognize. They're not sure if it was a disgruntled employee, but it was someone who had tokens to access basically all of the spaces infrastructure on their systems. Someone noticed it, noticed something kind of weird was going on and they started working back from there. So this is what they put on Twitter earlier today. They say, due to a security incident, we strongly suggest you rotate any tokens or keys used in Hugging Face spaces. So basically the part of a Hugging Face card where you can immediately spin up an inference endpoint and mess around with them. We have already proactively revoked a number of Hugging Face tokens and are working with cybersecurity forensic specialists to investigate the issue as well as review our security policies and procedures. And they say you can find more information here. There's a little more information on the local Llama subreddit where, again, they just kind of mention this thread on the Hacker News and a few bits of what was going on. And there was also a really weird email that went out earlier today that said, we recently detected suspicious activity linked to one of our tokens, indicating it may have been publicly exposed. You can refresh its value or create a new token on HuggingFace.com. So I also got this email. And yeah, I'm not sure if they sent this to everyone or, you know, so we'll see. So hopefully they figure out what was going on. Their blog gives us a little bit more information. They kind of go through the steps to remediate this again. And then they also go over some improvements they've made. So they basically just said that they're doing better keys management. They're um, paying more for software that can help them with traceability and understanding how they can robustify and expand our system's ability to identify leaked tokens and proactively invalidate them. So basically this just means um, how someone could access GPU resources with your account or with your token that is in theory something only you should have. And of course, since this is something that was actually pretty important, uh, it got picked up by TechCrunch. So the takeaways from this are kind of interesting. And you might think, oh, it's just, you know, one person got access to this and maybe just looked around a bit. But it's a, it's a curious thing that, that also happens in every industry as soon as things start to get pretty serious. So obviously, there are quite literally billions of GPUs that are hooked up to a number of these services, whether it's just a GPT-4 wrapper startup or it's any one of these services that provides GPUs that you can then easily, you know, start running these models on. And the thing is, with that amount of hardware and that amount of money involved, you start to create incentives for people to look for leaks or look for cracks where they can get into these systems. And initially you would think, oh, like Hugging Face, it's a place where researchers post their research and you can play around with models on pretty cheap GPUs and that's that. You know, why would that need to be as hardened as, you know, the Amazon AWS dashboard or my AWS login, which I need to access, you know, potentially a lot of money worth of resources. And the point is, is, you know, Hugging Face is a draw for a lot of people who are new users. It's a draw for people that are researchers, etc. But researchers sometimes also aren't the most uh, experienced when it comes to doing things securely and thinking about how someone with maybe a different set of incentives, basically malincentives, would want to use their systems to do other things like spread malware or publish a new faster model that in reality, as opposed to giving you a Python library that speeds up inference, actually just speeds up the, the ability for them to turn your computer and your GPUs into a botnet or into a crypto miner of some kind. Hugging Face has grown with this and they've grown substantially in the last year. They're now valued at basically $5 billion. And as I said, there's a ton of GPU infrastructure hooked up to them that if you just link a card and make an account, you can start using right away which again is a huge incentive for hackers or people looking for ways to profit off this to try to break their system. And this is one of the times that they were caught. And fortunately this time it wasn't something major. 
And going forward, I think it's a really interesting area where people should think carefully about what they're doing with this. Like for instance, if you have a machine you do a lot of banking stuff on, maybe don't use that as the machine that you're downloading all of these different machine learning models from. Uh, if you see a new site that's like not GitHub or not Hugging Face, maybe think carefully before downloading huge models from them and just running it as if you shouldn't really care um, with Python. So this is probably fine, but it definitely prompts people to be a little bit more careful and to think about how we treat this highly critical infrastructure going forward. For instance, there's also a question of if a lot of this stuff is going to start to be targeted since we're sanctioning China so much and telling them that they can't use a lot of it. Ironically, with a lot of these GPU clouds, especially the ones that are hosted in the US and Europe, a lot of their users are actually people who are either in China or in countries where we've said you can't buy those GPUs. For instance, I'm really careful with how I host certain GPUs on vast AI when I'm not using them, because in theory, I don't have a lot of control of who's using them or how they're using them. So obviously I'm very careful with networking, very careful to keep it entirely separate. And fortunately, I, have, I really haven't had any major issues, knock on uh, my wood desk. So I'm curious what you think. Have you used Hugging Face? Did you get any weird emails from Hugging Face about this? Fortunately, this is pretty straightforward. So again, I'll link below to their blog post and their Twitter post about what you can do to make sure that you're not affected by this and that if they think you were, how you can make sure that no one maybe has access to your account or, or can continue to cause you a headache. And yeah, I'm curious what you think about the security of this infrastructure and where you kind of think we should continue to go in the future to make sure that things like this don't have a huge impact and don't kind of muddy the waters with renting GPUs online. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, I hope you learned something. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next one.